Hello, this is Dr. Minden Tsai from Chai Service General Hospital, Taipei, Taiwan. In this video, I'm going to talk about the intermittent photic stimulation during EEG recording. Let's start with the standard technique of performing a good IPS. The timing of performing IPS should be before hyperventilation or at least 3 minutes after hyperventilation. Because after hyperventilation, patients usually become drowsy and more relaxed. In adults and ad adolescents, this may help patients to be less anxious during IPS recording. In children, performing hyperventilation before IPS maximizes the chances of obtaining a spontaneous sleep, sleep recording. To standardize the IPS recording, we should use a lamp with an intensity of at least 0.7 Joule that delivers a series of faulty flexures by a strobe light 30 cm from the patient's nasion. We should keep the patient awake during IPS recording because IPS during sleep does provoke photoparasismal responses only in REM sleep, which is usually not obtainable during a routine EEG recording. To determine IPS sensitivity, separate trends of stimulus are performed, including eye closure, eye closed, and eye opening. If there is not enough time, we should choose the eye closure condition or because it has the highest chance of inducing photoparasismal response. When performing IPS, a series of flash stimulus trends of increasing frequency up to 30 Hz each trend is presented for 10 seconds with a pause of 10 seconds between each trend, as the picture shown here. Another good method for performing IPS was proposed by ILAE in 2012. As shown here, the flash stimulus frequencies are delivered in a specific order. If there is a generalized response at certain frequency, Skip the remainder of the series and start again with 60 Hz and go down in frequencies until again a generalized photoparasismal response occurs. Let's see an example demonstrated here. The flash stimulus starts with 1 Hz, then 2 Hz, 8 Hz, 10 Hz. Assuming that the patient develops photoparasismal response at 15 Hz, and therefore placing the lower threshold as 15 Hz. We should skip the remainder of the series and start the flash stimulus backwards from 60 Hz. As demonstrated here, we started from 60 Hz to 50 Hz, 40 Hz, and then 25 Hz, which is when all hypothetical patients developed another photoparasismal response. We then call that certain frequency the higher threshold, with it being 25 Hz in this case. EG technicians should recall the responses in detail. After introducing the standard techniques of IPS, I'm going to talk about the five main responses we expect to see during IPS recording. First of all, the photomyogenic response. Photomyogenic response is an EMG potential. Therefore, it predominantly occurs in the anterior head region where the frontalis and temporalis muscles are located, as demonstrated by the picture here. However, in some cases, we can see the photomyogenic response is tending to upper body regions and causing generalized jerking movements. The photomyogenic response is time-locked to the flash frequency, occurring about 50 to 60 milliseconds after each flash, and ceasing immediately when the flash terminates. This is a double banana montage EEG. Here, a beautiful photomyogenic response is demonstrated during IPS at 5 Hz. We can see frontalis EMG potentials over bilateral frontal polar regions, which are time locked to the flash stimulus. The photomyogenic response starts when the flash stimulus begins and immediately ceases when the stimulus stops. 
Next, I'm going to introduce the electroretinogram. Electroretinogram is a normal response to IPS generated by retinal ganglion cells. The discharges are of low voltage and appears in the anterior head regions. It is also time locked to flash stimulus. When you want to make sure whether the discharges are electroretinogram, we can use a towel to cover the eye. As the animation demonstrates below, if the discharges disappear following cover covering of the eye, we can confidently identify electroretinogram without misdiagnosing it as other discharges. This is a double banana montage EEG. And we can see the discharges located in the frontopolar regions. The discharges were of low voltage and of the same frequency at 5 Hz as the flash stimulus trend. It is time locked to flash stimulus and ceases immediately right after the flash stimulus terminates. If you want to make sure whether it is an electroretinogram or not, use a towel to cover the eye. An electroretinogram will disappear immediately after blocking the eye from light. We will move on to the photic driving response. Photic driving response is a rhythmic hospital dominant waveform that is induced by flash stimulus. Studies have shown that patients with large pulse and lambda waves will show more prominent photic driving responses. The photic driving response in the occipital regions is characterized by a 70 to 150 millisecond delay from the onset of flash stimulus. There are two types of photic driving response patterns, harmonic and subharmonic. Here, is, here are some examples shown here. A harmonic response is defined as occipital driving frequency presenting as an integer multiple of the photic stimulation frequency. For example, under 5 Hz of flash stimulation trend. A harmonic occipital driving will show discharges with frequencies of 5, 10, 15, and so on. On the other hand, a subharmonic occipital driving presents as frequencies of an integer divided by the flash stimulus frequency. For example, during 10 Hz flash stimulation trend, a subharmonic occipital driving will present with frequencies of 5, 3.33, 2.5, and so on. This is a double banana montage EEG. Between the dashed lines are periods of flash stimulus trend with a frequency of 5 Hz. We can see beautiful photic driving responses in the occipital regions. Let's take a closer look at the same EEG by magnifying the picture. We can see the characteristic time lag of 100 milliseconds between the photic stimulus and a discharge. A harmonic driving response with 5 and 10 Hz under IPS of 5 Hz is also identified. Here is another example. Under IPS with 5 Hz, we can see photic driving response over hospital regions, time locked to the photic stimulation period. By using spectral analysis, we can easily identify the beautiful harmonic driving response, which shows integral multiples of 5 Hz. Another example of harmonic driving while under P IPS of 11 Hz. The spectral analysis confirmed the presence of harmonic driving response with 11 
and 22 hertz. Let's move on to photoelectric response. Photoelectric response is a result of photochemical response generated by high impedance of an electrode, such as when an electrode is broken. Like other responses during IPS, photoelectric response is typically seen in anterior head regions and also restricted to a single electrode, especially the broken one. It also has a time lock feature to the frequency of IPS and diminished when covering the electrode with a towel. This is a double banana montage EEG with a flash stimulus trend of 7 Hz. Between the dashed lines is the flash stimulus period. We can see a symmetrical discharge is restricted to the FP2 electrode, but not in the FTP1 electrode. The frequency is the same as the stimulus frequency of 7 Hz. These findings were consistent with photoelectric response due to a broken FP2 electrode. This is an L1I2 reference montage EEG with a flash stimulus of 9 Hz. We can see 9 Hz discharges diffusely demonstrated in all A1 related regions. By using a transverse montage, we can confirm that the discharge is restricted in A1 electrode. The above findings are consistent with a photoelectric response caused by A1 high impedance, possibly caused by a broken electrode. Don't forget that if we want to confirm whether it is a photoelectric response or not, we can use a towel to cover the suspected electrode. The discharges will diminish afterward if it is truly a photoelectric response. Finally, we are going to talk about the photoparasismal response. A photoparasismal response is epileptiform patterns of discharges that are activated by IPS. It is associated with three types of generalized seizure activity, tonic-clonic, myoclonic, and absence. There are two types of photoparasismal response. Self-limited, which means the discharges do not exceed the duration of the stimulation. And self-sustaining, if the discharges outlast the stimulation. It contains four main categories, including generalized bilateral posterior dominant, bilateral occipital, and focal unilateral patterns. According to published studies, photoparoxysmal response is usually in induced at frequencies of 15 to 20 Hz or upon eye closure. A photoparoxysmal response is likely to indicate genetic generalized epilepsy. However, it may only occur solely as a genetic trait without seizures. When a photoparasismal response occurs concomitantly with generalized convulsive seizures, IPS should be discontinued immediately and we should stabilize the patient first. This is an A1-A2 reference montage EEG. Between dash lines is the flash stimulus trend of 17 Hz. We can see photoparasismal responses shown as spike and wave complexes, starting in the left parietal occipital region with secondary bisynchrony. We can see there is no time lock relationship between the photoparasismal response and the flash stimulus. The onset and cessation of photoparasismal response show no temporal relationship to the fresh stimulus. 
Here is another example of flash stimulus of three hertz. This is this is an A1 A2 montage EEG. We can see generalized spike and wave complexes with the maximum amplitude over bilateral central parietal occipital regions, which de developed after photic stimulation. The photoparasitic response in this patient was self-limited, which diminished after cessation of flash stimulus. When we see the patterns via EEG recording system, we should check the patient's status. If there was generalized convulsive seizure attack, we should stop the IPS and stabilize the patient immediately. This table is adapted from Dr. Grant's book and concluded the important points of identifying the five types of responses during IPS. I want to thank Dr. Guan and Dr. Yao for inspiring me on EEG learning. Dr. Guan for providing beautiful EEGs and suggestions in this lecture, and Dr. Fan for English editing. Hope you enjoy the lesson and thank you for your attention.